we're going to go into the questions that have been posted in the chat box. I'd ask if there are additional questions, please don't hesitate to, to ask those. We'll get started with some of them that are in there, and I'll just kind of keep a, a watch on new questions that come in. Our first question um, goes back to um, Mr. Gooch's presentation. Kurt, can you um, discuss whether, uh, answer the question, can a positive or a negative pressure system work, or will it cause too much of a draft when we're trying to um, keep those calves comfortable? Well, um, that's, that's a pretty open-ended question, actually. It, <clears throat> some of it depends on the time of year. Um, and um, more specifics about where the air is introduced and where it may be um, being drawn through, drawn out of the barn. Um, <clears throat> I believe that uh, in the in, in the upper northeast and Midwest, where we have cold conditions, um, that this neutral pressure system is a, is really good because we can we can really uh, control the air streams in the barn. Um, if we do anything r as far as uh, trying to use uh, open curtains and tubes. Um, we're, we just don't have as much predictability and where our air is going. Um, if we get into the warmer and, and hot periods, then we're less concerned about that, um, but we still want to make sure we get the air down at calf level. So certainly there are some other options there as well. Great. Thank you. Another question is kind of, I believe, has to do with the below-grade floor gutter that's used both for or the common plenum that's used both for ventilation purposes as well as manure and wash water removal. Is there... Are there any concerns with um, manure gases, such as methane, and having that coincide with um, mechanical ventilation fans? Is there any concern for you know, ignition? Well, not in the way that we design them. Um, methane is only produced in an anaer anaerobic situation, and, and the washdown water is not allowed to sit around in, the, in these gutters um, like uh, you know, a backed-up pipe may. So it drains out readily, and um, there is no production of methane. Um, and if there was, um, I, I, like say it may be ammonia, which could could you know be produced if it did back up for a little bit. Um, the uh, the rate that the air is being drawn through the holes in that uh, that uh, let the air into the into the uh, below grade plenum is certainly enough to. Um, Take that ammonia and discharge it outside the barn, and not let it to come, not allow it to come up through those holes. Okay, thank you. Now, the next question I'll, I'll pose to um, both um, Dr. Zin and Lee, and it's a bit of an estimation question, but how do you see the um, price of animal products being impacted by some of these um, changes due to animal welfare concerns? Maybe, um, Dr. Zin, do you want to take the first crack at that one? Sure. I'll uh, answer a question in terms of egg production. Typically, when you're looking at these uh, enriched colony system and uh, looking at the additional costs and so forth, we're talking about 20% increase in the production cost. Now, when it comes down to the consumer's price uh, at the you know in the in the grocery store, that'll be a little bit different story. So, I'll just give you an example. So, uh, once uh, just right around the California. Proposition 2182 fact that January 1st in California, or shortly after that, actually a dozen regular eggs cost uh, 550 to $6 a dozen. So, um, but uh, in terms of just the cost, fairly on the cost side, our best estimate right now is about the 15 to 20 percent increase uh, in the cost. And there's a paper uh, by Dan Summoner uh, that's already uh, published. Uh, in this uh, issue, March issue of, uh, of poultry science, actually, you can uh, look at it. Great, thank you, Dr. Lee. Do you have? Um... Yes, I think in the swine side, we probably expecting similar thing. Uh, there's a paper published by the, uh, Professor Brooke, um our dean here, uh, talking about uh, school housing just uh, in south. Looking at the, the maximum could be. 20%, but it may, you know, as low as 5%, so in that range, I should say. So, you, you know, from the system I just presented, different system can be very different in terms of the uh, cost. So, that range from 5 to 20 Great, thank you. Um, back to uh, Mr. Gooch. One of the questions was, is there a rule of thumb on air changes per hour for normal ventilation for a calf house? 
Well, there are some numbers that we use as design basis, and they, they do depend um, on the time of year. And if we think back to the uh, slides I went through, there's the winter, um, and then transition, warm, and hot periods. And um, just for an example, um, and there's different different uh, methods to uh, um, design these mechanically ventilated barns. One would be to use a room volume air exchange method, and another one would be to use a per animal head method. And um, if we look, if we just for discussion today, um, if we looked at the room volume method in the summertime, we're talking about up to one room volume of air exchange per minute, 60 per hour in the summer, and then in the wintertime, it could be one-tenth or one-twelfth of that. OK, thank you. This question was um, posed during the, the calf housing presentation, but I think it probably applies to to all the livestock systems. Dust buildup on fans is a, is a concern. Are there reusable air filters that can protect fan motors that, that go on our ventilation fans? Um, Kurt, if you want to take a first crack at that, and maybe we can pass it off to our other speakers at some point here. OK, sure, Aaron. Um, I have never seen any. Um, such dust covers for the fan motors. Most of the, a lot of the fans are totally, uh, fan motors are totally enclosed motors to begin with. Um, so there really isn't, uh, so that if they, if they aren't, there's the option to, to specify or purchase those motors. So in that case, the dust cover really wouldn't make much difference. I guess maybe we could take that question and extend it to any kind of dust cover that would that help keep dust off the, the, the blade, which is the critical part. Um, never seen that either. Uh, Hongwei, do you want to weigh in here? Sure. You bet. I uh, concur with Kurt. Uh, I have not seen that myself. And uh, as he said, it's a totally enclosed. And, uh, you know, what you typically see is a screen in front of the fence. Make sure for the safety. And, uh, you know, for, for poultry, you, you make sure the feathers and get the, you know, doesn't get the exhausted. And then the workers typically go in there and clean it up, uh, these uh, uh, dust. Now, having thought that, so there's some special uh, cases where uh, ventilation, you know, use a hyperfilter. That's, that's more for, you know, bacterial control, you know, super sensitive uh, herd. You know, probably at the inlet side, you put some filter in it, try to filter the in, in, incoming air. So not. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think as um, uh, Mr. Gooch pointed out, proper fan maintenance for cleaning the fan, fan blades, maybe replacing belts on, on a regular occasion can go a long way to making sure our fans do work as best they can. Looks like there's maybe a couple more questions coming in. Again, um, I remind everybody that there's a chat box there to enter questions. Those, uh, the questions that are posed today, as well as the answers, will be uh, transcribed and, and shared along with uh, the archive of this webinar. One, uh, oh, here's one more question. Question is, do producers reduce ventilation during the cold weather to limit Heat loss and does that cause structural or environmental concerns? Um, maybe Kurt, do you want to basically is what happens in the cold weather with the building? Sure, sure. So um, and if we think about the uh, specifically to cap the uh, the stocking, you know, the stocking density is, is, is pretty low on a square foot basis, um, and then. Coupling that with the fact that calves do not produce a tremendous amount of metabolic heat, we're really not going to warm a calf barn by way of using, uh, you know, more controlled ventilation to try to limit the amount of metabolic heat lost. And experience has told us, showed us uh, time and time again, if that is the case, then we're going to have some poor air in the barn and unhealthy calves. Okay, thank you. Yep. I want to add on that. So yes, uh, in the winter time, to answer the question, yes, we do have what we call a middle of ventilation to specifically handle cold weather. So cold weather is coming in much drier. So basically, in the winter time, you try to control the humidity. In the summertime, you control temperature. So humidity, you don't want it to, you know, seventy-five percent. So you try to keep it at sixty, sixty-four percent. And uh, so then, uh, on some days, are very cold days. So of course, you have to add the supplemental heat. So to answer your question, no, you don't want to keep the humidity too high. You know, you have to start having condensation if the building is poorly insulated and have a shower. That's bad to the integrity of the structure and also the ammonia, too. So for that reason, for younger animals, you do have to provide supplemental heating. Great. Thanks for um, 
clarifying that that some of that different some of those differences between hot weather and cold weather ventilation. We'll give it a couple more minutes here just to see if any additional questions come in. Do appreciate all the information, all the extra information that has been posted by our our team of presenters here. We'll look at some of those different links that are provided and when the webcast is archived there's the opportunity to um, additional information. So we'll review those links that have all been posted as well. One con another question that has come up is whether there are concerns with mold buildup in the ventilation duct, well as um, which then would affect the health of the workers and, and health of the animals. I believe this would, um, question is for Kurt, with, especially with those air ducts providing mm -hmm. that uh, cat ventilation. So um, I guess the the, the uh, first part of the answer is we have not we have not gone on and tried to measure any mold. Um, I but past that, I will say that on the pressure, the positive pressure side, we're basically going drawing fresh air from the outside through the attic down through the uh, vertical air shafts and then discharging out the duct. So that's basically clean uh, outside air. Um, it's certainly going to build up uh, some dust over time, but uh, there hasn't been any anybody who's uh, reported any problems with that. On the negative side, um, once the air speeds of, of, of uh, again, the air going through those holes that are in the center where uh, sidewall air plenums blow grade um, is fast enough that uh, we've measured that with uh, different different times, different ways, and simply as using a swell. Um, and there is no there is no airflow coming out of those holes back into the room. So if there's any any mold spores or anything that that develop in the in the uh, below grade negative air plenum, um, they're going to be carried and just out along with the ventilation air and discharged through the uh, the exhaust fans. Great, thank you very much. Looks like we might have one more question coming in here. What is the airflow velocity rule of thumb in the ventilation ducts? Um, again, I believe this question is for you, Kurt. OK. Um, well, so I'll just say my goal is not to treat, teach engineering here. And, and, and so we, we use ag engineering principles to design this system. Um, and the, the uh, airspeed in the duct is really going to depend on the length of the duct and whether we're trying to do this for um, the winter time only, or you combine uh, the duct and do uh, winter and then uh, transition period. So we use engineering design calculations and principles, and then use some judgment calls depending on what we're really trying to do. Um, and that that kind of ties into what the producer you know wants to wants to. It's really systems line up with the producer's you know preferences and management. So we we, we take that into account and in, in making uh, you know the decisions and on the <coughs> the airspeed and and how many holes and what spacing and that kind of thing. Right, and so it'd be more that air velocity over the calf area that you're really concerned about in designing yeah. for versus the air velocity in the duct. Right, right, right. So my experience has taught me that we want to be 75 feet or, um, per minute or less if, um, in the cold, cold conditions. Right. Okay, these have been some really great questions. I really, again, appreciate the presenters each sharing their perspectives. I think you've seen we all came, um, all the presenters talked about their uh, their research or their extension or their outreach projects from different perspectives, including the engineering perspective, the management perspective, the uh, animal welfare perspective. And it really is the collective whole that we do want to focus on uh, for a sustainable system.